Yep. So, it's good to see everybody this morning, and as Pastor alluded to, we're going to leave the introduction of the series Purposeful Faith. I will recap it, though, where we came from and where we're going. And I will say, uh, though we had some technology issues this morning, we're obviously back up and running. Um, I usually have like a thousand slides and all that. I'm going to kind of tame down my A-type pers A personality and just do a few today. But more speak from my heart and share what God's put on my heart. Um, I wanted to kind of explain where we have actually gone as we look at the Purposeful Faith series. A few things. Um, the righteous live by faith in God that is put into purposeful action. Biblical faith is about confidence in who God is and his character. Biblical faith is the foundation in which we build everything upon as we walk with Christ. Purposeful faith doesn't require satisfying our desire to know why we face certain trials in life. Faith comes from God. Amen. God gives everyone a measure of faith. Faith itself increases by his word, so we should stay in his word. Faith can displace anything in our lives, as Ryan uh, preached on. To walk in purposeful faith, you need to displace any lies, any fears, or any worries that are holding you back from completely walking in faith in God's character and his specific work in your life. To walk in purposeful faith, you have to place your victory into God's hands as he defines it, oh. not as we define it. And be okay with that, because his ways are far higher than ours. Amen. And the Holy Spirit helps us to walk by purposeful faith beyond our natural senses. Many times we will operate just based upon what we can understand and I believe that today God's encouraging us to walk in such a faith that it transcends that, that the Holy Spirit can take us to another place that we were intended to be and operate out of day by day. So where are we actually going now? Starting today, over the next, let's say, six to eight weeks, we'll see how it plays out. Um, we're going to unpack the overview of how you actually walk out this purposeful faith in practical ways. So... One of the things that is big, uh, at least in our hearts as a ministry, is the concept of the Seven Mountains model. So in 1976, Bill Bright and Lauren Cunningham, founders of YWAM and Campus Crusade for Christ, had separate visions given to them from the Lord, but they were the same. So at two different times, they came together, communicated about it, felt it was affirmed. Um, and basically what it is, is just a cross division in society. So if you would break down society into each major section, you would see business, religion or the church, family, communications, arts and entertainment, government, and education. And if you look at those seven cross divisions, you'll see that most of our lives will flow through these seven areas. So what we want to do, um, I'm going to be starting today with the business mountain, and we can take that further to career, everything that you would do in vocation. Um, I also touch on communications uh, at a later week. Pastor Phil will be covering church or the religion mountain, government, and education. And Ryan Lapp will be speaking on family and arts and entertainment. As the weeks continue, we'll look at practical ways that you can apply your faith. Because as we've talked about before, the staggering stat that only 2% of people that come to churches throughout the country are actually paid by the church, and yet most of the body that shows up expects those 2% to kind of lead the entire charge. In reality, our heart is that the 98% would be the church outside of the church, so the word that I have for you today would be that you could take it and do something with it in your own individual life. And so that's our heart. So we're going to try to show you this in seven different ways as the weeks unfold and what that could look like within your family, at home, within your career today. And everywhere else, a lot of times people have, you know, God-given dreams, but they don't know how to execute them, how to walk it out. So because of that, they sadly do nothing with it. I wanted to give you a few kind of setup points before I then kind of go through a, a sketch of a series of stories of what God's walked me through, because I believe that there's nothing more powerful than our testimony. 
And um, so the first one is purposeful faith. It carries you through the vision that God gives you. It's, it's one thing to have faith, but, you know, will we endure when we're tested? We believe that faith in God and who he is is what allows you to remain steadfast in the midst of trials. And I've seen that in my own life, so I see the power and the fruit of it. However, the enemy, Satan, would say that distraction would be one of his primary tools. And even today with the technology stuff and things that could just even perhaps distract me from wanting to release the word that God's deposited into me for your benefit. Um, but he uses that as a primary tool to derail us from our kingdom building efforts in our lives and certainly in our vocation. So the things that we want to do that might be that your job duties get too burdensome at work so you feel like you can't do that or you don't want to overstep boundaries and bring your faith into the workplace and, and rock the boat or fear of losing your job or whatever it might be. Um, so in the sense of, well, busyness and other things that might even seem like good distractions, you're actually doing little in your vocation for God's glory. And Satan's gaining victory in that, though he shouldn't. He can't steal a believer's salvation, so he changes the tactics to do everything he can do to keep you from doing what God designed you to do Amen. in the marketplace. And so our heart is that we would come against that in the name of Jesus and believe and declare over your lives that that need to be true no longer. When I look at scripture, um, there's a couple that stood out to me, though scripture's rich, so there's many more, of course. First Peter 5, 8 to 9, as you can see here, stay alert, watch out for our great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against, and, against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your, fam, the, our, your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. And so many times what we'll want to believe is that what we're experiencing is just in our space, you know, and you'll say things like, well, you don't know what I'm going through. And the reality is other people truly do. And though I understand that our lives are unique. But yet this is the word, and the word isn't true sometimes. It's always true. And going further with that, so I said about being steadfast in the midst of trials. And so I love this passage in the book of James because it talks about the link between faith and endurance. And it reads, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know when your faith is tested... Your endurance has a chance to what? Grow. So let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete. Sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> Needing what? Nothing. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking that very thing. Um... So, saying that, it, it's, it's on my heart that, you know, how, how are we actually going to be able to please God then in our vocation, in our career, in our business? I know there's quite a number of people actually in our congregation, typically, that aren't here that do run businesses. Don, Sean, Evan, there's several gentlemen that come to mind immediately. But I really want everybody that's here today to think about the job that they have, had, might have, and in reality, even if we're within the home, we, we, all have, um, we all have a significant role that we're serving. And many of us at one point in our lives have actually had a job, and many of us right now have a job. And for the young, young ones, they uh, might be given jobs by their parents, but one day they're going to walk into it. So hearing what I have to share today can help them start well. I look at uh, Hebrews eleven six as well, um, that we've already preached on, but the reality of, you know, to please God, we must walk by faith. And I would say furthermore that uh, our faith in God that is actually put into action, not just the spiritual notion, allows his divine purposes for our lives to be made manifest. 
And so that simply means when that faith is put into action in God and who he is and his character, that things that he desires for our lives will become true and become realized as we walk in that, regardless of what we face. When our faith in God is put into action in our vocation also, you're able to shine the light of the gospel in places that honestly the church many times is simply not able to bring. And I've seen that in in real form in many ways, uh, though he's not here today. And actually, you know, the gentleman, Sean, who was actually saved here our second week, um, I've seen that God gave me the opportunity for about a year and a half to two years to be able to speak into his life and bring the gospel to him in a place where he wasn't going to be able to receive it elsewhere. And then God went further than that and brought him here. And though he's typically here and he's not today, it's just been amazing to see what God's done in his life. And so that's early fruit for us uh, and an example of putting your faith into practical action in your vocation. And I, I did that as I was coaching him and just trying to build relationship and bring the light of the gospel into his life in real ways. Um, another point that I wanted to make was our goal in our vocation is to take the kingdom of God forcefully with us. You'll see a video at the end today that's really going to drive that home. But take it with you forcefully into the roles that you have in the marketplace now or you will one day as you reflect on maybe the role that you had, and then one day perhaps you have a role, what could that look like to be different from what it was before? If you do that, you can infiltrate the darkness of the world as God's ambassador. And if we're honest, I mean, the world is a pretty dark place in many ways. It's, I can even reflect on how I grew up and how I see the world now, and though there's, there's many great things about what's going on too, it's, it's a dark world, and, and the light of Christ needs to be shined ever more. And so your presence actually should change the atmosphere as you walk into it. As you're God's ambassador, you're bringing the, the power and the authority of Christ Jesus with you. You're walking in that, and you're literally changing the environment around you. You might not recognize that, or even at times be aware of that. Maybe you don't even believe it, but it is true. And so for those that have made Christ Lord and Savior, that's the reality that you are a force to be reckoned with in the marketplace as you walk into it, as you do what you do, as you represent him and you are um, walking in his authority. I also had another scripture. Um, I'm not going to read the whole passage because it could truly be a series in itself, but in Ephesians 6, 13 to 18, and it's, you know, um, really talking about putting the full armament of God on, and in six ways that it's defined, you, you do this to be able to resist the distractions of the enemy, and we talked about how that's one of his primary tactics, tactics to get us off point, so we're not making an impact in our career for God's glory, we're not doing what he wanted. Put on the shoes of peace, the belt of truth, the body armor of righteousness, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of God, which is his word. I keyed into verse 16 because for me, it uh, really hit home. Hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. I'm going to give you some personal examples here in a moment of how I held up that shield of faith and how I continue to do that uh, with God's strength. Um, but the reality is when you do that, it's not as if you're just grinning and bearing and holding up the shield with all of your strength just to, you know, until you're not strong enough and you drop the shield. It's the reality that, that God gives you the ability to do that and your faith in his character and who he is will block those fiery darts, which really are the attacks from the evil one that, to distract you, to rob things from your life, to have you believing lies rather than walking in his truth. And so... Um, I've seen that if we, can, if we can persevere in these things, as James said, the link between faith and endurance, we'll build spiritual muscles. We, regardless of if we're, a, you might not be a bodybuilder or whatnot, but as you walk with the shield of faith up and truly the full armor of God, you become a uh, bodybuilder for the kingdom of God. Regardless if the world can see it in your physical stature, they will see it in your presence as you, uh, as you move. So, 
Um, how do we, using that as kind of setup stuff, how do we actually walk in purposeful faith in this business mountain, which was my assignment today to try to talk about unpacking that for somebody that, as I even met with a friend yesterday, he has a dream of starting a business. If it's, if it's one day starting a business, it's getting involved in the family business, it's um, a new career that you'll have in the future, it's doing something more significant in the one that you have today, if it's you're young but the, you know, stepping into the very first one that you do to make a difference for God and not waiting decades to make an impact wherever you're at, whoever you are, a few things that I would share. And again, these just come from the things God's given me, so it's the best that I have today. And I, and I pray that they will penetrate deep within you. Um, one of the things I've learned is you, you have to walk with open hands. You, Pastor Phil, has, I always think of you when I say something like that. Because again, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't have planted this church if you weren't very open-handed. So you modeled that to me. But I've also seen in business and career, um, in early years, I would want to try to be 52 steps ahead, always have it figured out. And it doesn't mean that my mind doesn't still try to go there at times because I, I like, I have vision, I like to execute it, get it done, all these things. But what God showed me is have open hands because I'm going to bring promotion, change, shifts. If, if I've seen anything, the more obedient we are to God, the more he seems to just mix it up. And it's exciting and, and all this, but it's exciting also in the sense you're walking into greater unknowns. And so there's many things that I don't even uh, have a clue what to do with, but he gives me away. And so in that, you know, walk with open hands, follow him through any change, shift, promotion within your career or life. So again, even if that is leaving a, a job that you've had for 10, 20 years, and I'm not saying that you need to do that, okay? But if that's you, um, and you know that God's telling you to do that, then be willing to do that with open hands. Don't live out of fear, and I understand we have to provide for our families, but allow God to do what he purposed for your life. Um, also, you can't serve both God and money, and I've learned that radical obedience with your finances, it's going to do many things, but definitely one thing, it's going to open spiritual doors. And opening spiritual doors gives you access to just pull down the kingdom of God into your reality. And I think that that's a powerful thing. And you've probably heard it said that you should put your money where your mouth is. And I would say one step further, you should put your money where your faith is. And so inside of that, if that's true, I look at many things when you do that. And then it's like, well, oh, I, I, I did it because I trust God. But I'm, uh, you know, if I'm honest, you know, two minutes later, you ask me, how do you feel about that? You're pretty scared, you know? <laughs> and so then we look at the word of God and we look at John 14, 27, though I won't put it up here. And it just talks about this. Jesus, it's just Jesus talking, you know, red letters in the Bible. We love that stuff. And it just, he gives you a peace that the world cannot give you. That's what he Amen. testifies to. And so he also says in that you should not be afraid or worry. And so, again, if we take him at his word, if you're radically obedient to God in your vocation, with your finances, and we, I pick finances because it's one of the things that most people will kind of have one arm on still, you know, yeah, because it's, it really functions in such a way that it, if we can just keep comfortable enough, I feel better. And it's like, yeah, well... That, that's one perspective, but when you just completely let go and trust God, and then he does things that you couldn't, Come on. you just go to a whole other gear. And then, and then not only that, you can give that to other people, yes. and you see people's lives change. Yes. I, I've seen this. I've seen the fruit of this as I coach people, and again, several of the people that I coach that are actually not here today, just seeing somebody take something of faith that you have that you impart into their lives and then they do that and then they take that and impart into somebody else's life that's what the gospel was intended to do and we don't need to wait to have effect uh, for christ here within this church room today you know a, a gathering place he wants us to take it out everywhere and use it for him because we're not going to save people but his holy spirit will do the work you know we're not going to necessarily create the financial breakthrough just through our efforts and actions but he will provide everything that we need and i've just seen it and and so just some practical examples okay so get a little bit more practical for me joe and these are just business things but 
dial it to your situation, okay? And I don't care if you're talking about your, I don't know how much uh, money you have, Elijah, from like, you know, chores or whatever, but, you know, if it's your $10 allowance or whatever, it's like take what you have and apply what I'm saying to that. So, open hands, radical obedience, trusting God, putting my money where my faith is, you know, doing things like tithing for companies again, even if I'm putting it on a line of credit. And, and there, there, could, there could be things that people, uh, I'd have to explain more, but I'll just say some people would never even consider that wise or even an option. But when I know that God's in something and I can trust him, I just do it, period. And so sowing seeds of faith and blessing into a Christian tenant that broke leases multiple times uh, cost me $10,000. You know, there, there's, uh, you look at it and you say, I trust God, I trust God to not only compensate me, yeah. but to use it as a, a moment of teaching in their lives, in my life, yeah. and others that were involved there. Sowing seeds of faith and blessing into an old co-worker who sued me, versus though my Christian lawyers would say, defend yourself, you will win, I chose not to. And in these scenarios, Sometimes people could look at somebody like me, and I say this not to elevate me, but you could say, well, it seems like most things that Joe touches just kind of turns into something good. And I would look back and say the evidence of much of this is certainly in the last few years, even more so, is when I've just walked being led by the Holy Spirit and trusting God in radical ways. He's just things, done things that I can't say anything more than it's, it's a God thing. And so in that, it goes from it's like, well, that was a God thing. Well, what about that? Well, that was another God thing. And it's, and it's not just like me copping out on an answer. It's truth. And so if you can like walk like season by season and just see God continue to build greater things, sometimes, you know, in the moment when something happens tough to you in your career, you lose your job, you know, you're like, well, how are we going to pay our bills? Whatever it is, in those moments, you want to be fearful. You want to be scared. But I find now, I gave you these examples, this is with me and some of my businesses and things, and these are, these are real dollars, real things that affect my actual bank accounts. And now my kind of mindset is, is I, a lot of times when, I, when I'm worried or anxious, I don't have the mind of Christ. But if you can press in and get the mind of Christ, it changes yes. everything. And so yeah. I, will, I will say things like, Satan, that's the worst thing you could do, because all that's going to happen now is I step into this and I trust God more. He grows me. He strengthens me. And yeah. so when I face even examples like those three I gave you the next time, I'm not even going to sneeze at it. Because I'm like, look what God did. Look what he took me yeah. through. And so and, and what I see and find is our testimony. Those most difficult things, those times where you're scared, like, I'm going to, how am I even going to pay my mortgage or whatever it is? It's like you, you at those moments, God will bring you people in the yeah. same situation and he's going to change their life through yeah. you because of your testimony, your story. Yeah. And so, again, it's one thing for us to read this great book, the Bible, and to do nothing with it. But to read it and actually apply it to your lives, yeah. everything changes. Yeah. And so, uh, going further with that, Pastor and I were actually talking on this. You didn't realize it, but, you know, I'm, I'm always trying to keep my antenna up. And I completely agreed, so I, I added it in. Nothing you sow in the kingdom of God through purposeful faith will return back void without a yield. It won't. So those examples, it's like, I don't know how he's going to compensate me. And there's all sorts of examples. Like we're in the midst of all these things. And I'm going, a lot of these trials I gave you were really recent things. And then like another company comes, we're acquiring a business for almost like no money. Like he, he compensates you in ways where it's like, I don't even know what you're doing, how you're doing. I'm not even looking for opportunities, but he's bringing them. And so he, he defines our victory again, his way, not our way. And just let go and let him do what he wants to do. And it's just, we're, we're supposed to not walk with such burden. It's supposed Come to be on. light and easy. Come That's on. what Christ said. Yeah. So also, another thing I learned in, in this is I reflected back about the stories I'll share. Purposeful faith is about embracing the unseen. Yeah. Its goal is not the elimination of risk. So we need to be ready to take action because you never know when your opportunity is going to appear. Yeah. And so the, one of the worst things I think we can do uh, as followers of Christ is to see our opportunity and not seize it. Come on. As if God's arm was too short, as if he couldn't make a way for you to do that. Come on. A few other quick keys to uh, walking in purposeful faith in this business mountain. Follow God no matter what. Yeah. 
Again, we don't have to understand why or how he's going to do what he's going to do. But if you know he's in it, and you'll typically know he's in it because you'll have peace. That peace that we talked about in John 14, 27. It's not a peace that the world can give. But when he gives it to you, you just know, all right, Lord, I know, I know what you're saying. Constantly seek the help of the Holy Spirit. In that, he will make your path clear. Order your steps. It, many times, you know, I, until I get the mind of Christ, I'm anxious about things. You know, Ryan and I even had moments about just I don't know, dumb stuff about the construction with the underground across the street and stuff. But you get to the place where it's like, God's just going to sort it out. He's going to sort it out, period. And, you know, that was another practical thing within, you know, working with lots of businesses. And there was lots of finances involved in all of that. Things that could get you frustrated. Another point, being steadfast in the midst of change in diversity a lot of times people will buckle under pressure because they will not they will start to lean on their understanding. Come on. Scripture says lean not on your understanding but acknowledge God and always he, what he will make your path clear. Right. So if we want our path to be clear and I don't know about you but I want it to be clear then we better lean on his understanding not our own. And so when you do that it's just kind of this thing where people can look and I'm not saying be dumb I'm not saying like both of you quit your job and like you know, give all your money away and like burn your house down and go live out in the woods. I'm not saying that. that if you feel like God's telling you to do that, then okay, far be it from me to tell you not. But also, there's a key when you can align your passion and your purpose for God's glory. And at an early age, I've been able to. I'm blessed in that way. And I love to help other people get to that place. If you can do that, you'll be in the center of his will. And at that point, it doesn't really even matter what you get paid. But I find when you're there, you'll create, you'll be such a, so alive and you'll thrive in such a way, you'll create value in the world and God will compensate you because of that reality. Um, another uh, few things here. Um, I just wanted to remind, again, of something I said early on, purposeful faith carries you through the vision that God gives you. It carries you through that vision. It, again, I am a man of vision. I was even talking to my wife, Jen, yesterday about the kind of Stoker Underground space. It was really cool to take a lot of the team over there yesterday and they saw it and were like, ah, a lot of people could start seeing what I could see back when it was a train wreck. And yet it's not done yet and I can see what it looks like when it's done. But, but my faith in God, I and mean, we went through, like, you know, it was supposed to be a three-month project. It took eight months. There's all these ridiculous things, multiple zonings, you know, like just needing to jump through so many hoops and lots of favor that we needed to the point where we got tons of it donated from companies like it was amazing but in this in the midst of that my faith in the vision God gave and who he is carried through that whole thing we're you know about 10 days from that becoming real I looked back and I said okay what can I tell you personally about me in such a way where you can you can know me more but also you can apply it to maybe your life and so these are just some of the things that I walked through when I looked at faith. And I don't have enough time to really unpack them in great detail. But um, there's about six points in this story I wanted to share. And I'll have one visual I want to show as well. But I had faith at age 20 when I started, not my first company, but my first successful company. But it wasn't a biblical faith, truth be told. And that company still exists. It's across the street at, at Kingdom Crossroads where we'll be gathering on Thursday nights in a couple weeks. And uh, it's a great blessing. Uh, it's a great blessing even uh, to this ministry for the resources that it's able to provide. Um, but I simply had, at that point, I wasn't a follower of Christ. I believed that there was a God. I was spiritual. Uh, I was bold and courageous in some of these things. But then when I looked at that, there was a big difference between the faith I had there. And a lot of that faith was really probably translated better selfish ambition and just youthful passion. Um, but so then if we fast forward from there, you might not be able to see it real well. It's not really that important, but just as a visual, because a lot of times I like to share things with you and I want it to be real, that this wasn't, this isn't just some kind of thing I'm telling you. It literally happened. So 724 of 2008, I was in Chicago and I filled this out and I wrote down that story and I kept it. And so at this point, now this is uh, a couple years after I accepted Christ, the back end of it four, and he just really, um, at least in my, my mind, it was a Damascus Road type of experience where it just took me and flipped me upside down. Uh, 
I then walked forward. This story was about writing books, public speaking, doing things internationally, coaching. None of these things existed. And I felt that day like I had carpal tunnel when I was writing it down. And the Holy Spirit like gave me these words. I remember I wrote it in what felt like two minutes. And, and they were like, pick a date, like three or more years out and tell us like what your life's going to look like. And a lot of people, even me, that's one of vision, it, it takes some time to process that. But I clearly got in agreement with what God was saying, wrote it down. And then I'm like, well, what do I do with this? And I feel like you're saying like walk forward in faith, you know. And so I did. And really, to be honest with you, everything that's written on there happened. Only one detail was slightly off. The book got published like a couple weeks later or something. Things happened beyond what was written on there. And um, these things continue to still help people. But that was the beginning of me saying, okay, like I'm going to really put this out there. You know, I had family uh, re renounce me and walk out of my life, best friends, some of which have come back. But it's been, you know, employees left and it just, these are trials. These are those fiery darts that come against you. But I held up that faith, the shield and said, I trust you, Lord. And I kept walking forward. And I just, clearly didn't understand a lot of what I was even doing. Then as I walked forward about four years later, 2012, 2013, I uh, went to some trips, uh, two to India, the first of two to India, one to Mozambique and Africa. And again, though I don't have enough time to explain the details of them because they're cool stories, uh, my heart was to go to meet an unreached people group. Um, it's a mission trip in both scenarios. Uh, the one I knew how you use in some ways, but in both capacities, I wind up coming in with no preparation, no resources, being asked to like do uh, coaching and public speaking in like the middle of nowhere with uh, these like tribal leaders and, and just stuff that it was like in those moments of desperation, I had to lean on God and his understanding. He did greater things than me. He built spiritual muscles. We physically saved people in truck accidents on the sides of the roads. Like, experiences as I walked in this, then I remember one of those stories, the reason why I shared it, the Mozambique one, right before I left, I had my right-hand man quit. I had a mental breakdown, had all these things that were against us. And I remember saying to God, I was like, I feel like so many trials are coming against me. But I, I remember then even communicating to Satan. I was like, you're going to have to kill me. I'm getting on that airplane. And so I, I walked by faith forward, and he did unexpected things. He used me in such a way in my career that really started to change the complexion of what I brought back to the States. And ever since that, it's, it's kind of given me a broader view of, of how God can use me. Uh, second quarter of 2014, the whole story that we've, I've spoke about before with Kingdom Crossroads, the buildings across the street that brought us the kind of stoga. God had to just almost rip up Main Street and park the Red Seas and do a million different things to get us down here. Um, did it with um, zero dollars out of my pocket, which was amazing. Um, and we've started to transform the property there. We're excited in about two weeks to be able to get us over there and start using that. We had a moment where God gives you intimate little details through the Holy Spirit. I, I wasn't even there, but Ryan shared this at breakfast or lunch. Maybe it was two days ago. There's a, name, a man named Harold, the new Danville Mennonite Church locally that they've had us speak at recently. And a couple of the guys blessed us and had a, uh, helped us with the painting over there, prepping and stuff like that. And he was explaining, I've heard this before with, from other people, including uh, Don Connolly, actually, Ryan. But Harold said, you know, we had a vision for this space 30 years ago in ministry, what they wanted to use it for. And he's like, I'm so blessed to see you guys actually doing it. It's like he's like, almost like his vision and dreams are being fulfilled for what we're now beginning. And so... Um, each thing that I've done, it's just there's, there's moments and special reminders that we get as we walk in purposeful faith. God will fulfill things that will not only be used to help us and bless us, but bless other people in ways that we never understood. Um, I talked about in, in um, the past some other challenges I faced, but in brief, in 2015, with the internet company that I mentioned uh, across the street, you know, I had to trust God radically where I would say the company was probably at one of the worst financial spots it was in the history of the company. And this is what, a year and a half ago? And grabbed the wheel, the Titanic took over, um, hit the iceberg before the one that sunk the boat, got rid of uh, the president of the company, my partner, made tons of changes, five of the employees are no longer there. You know, in coming, in coming down 
to Conestoga, there's lots of opposition. People didn't want us to, to do that. And I just found, again, trusting him no matter how painful it is. He then takes us February of this year to the record profit and sales the company ever had in almost two decades. And since then, it's been miraculous. And the, the, uh, the profits consistently with the company, which is getting sewn back into the church and just all the different ways I look at this. And I'm just like, again, I, I could unpack a lot of the details to show you more, but I'll just say that God does stuff in such a way where he's just always like, son, do you trust me? Do you trust me? I've got this. These things, they too shall pass. And um, then the last thing for me was just the step of obedience that all the core families took, including ours, to just plant this church. You know, before necessarily we have all the credentials, experience, I mentioned this, Pastor Phil's very open-handed. We would not be standing here if he wasn't. And your open-handedness builds my faith. And so uh, inside of that, these are just some practical ways in my vocation. People could look at that and say, well, like, I told Jen yesterday we left the party, and I hate the question, what do you do for a living? Like, it's a weird answer. It's like, well, I got this business, and I do this one over here, and they're very different. And I got this other thing, and oh, we just planted a church, and I'm like one of the leaders over there. And it's like a weird answer, but the reality is I talked about that kind of like spicy adventure that the Holy Spirit takes you on. He just does things and continues to take you in places where you're like, I don't even really understand fully where I'm going, but I know I'm walking where he wants me to walk. And he's fulfilling the things that he wants me to, to do. So there's no better place than that, really. Um, I have a quick video, and then I'll close this in prayer. But one thing I want you to think about when you watch this video, and I like it because it's going to take some really practical roles. You might be like, I have no desire to ever start a business. Never have, never will. That's completely cool. This guy's going to talk about just general types of careers. Um, the true identity of a for any Christian, it's rooted in Christ. And because of that, you are meant to carry the kingdom of God with you everywhere you go as his ambassador. If we could play the video, that would be phenomenal. It's that good, just building the suspense. I can't get the TV back on, buddy. There we go. It's coming alive. Okay. Use it. Being a player. You need to ask himself. That critical question is who do we serve? Third question. Who do we serve? You see, the person sitting in chair number one serves the living God. See, the person sitting in this chair lives to serve God. The person who sits in this chair studies to be a lawyer, and it's not just a lawyer who happens to be Christian. The person sitting in this chair is, is a person who's a, a child of God who takes the kingdom of God into the courtroom. The person sitting in this chair is not just a nurse or a doctor who happens to be a Christian. The person sitting in this chair is a child of God who takes the kingdom of God to the bedside of every person who's sick and the compassion of Christ for them and the love of God for them and the mercy and the, and the peace and the, the counsel and the wisdom of God to every single case and every patient that stands before them. The person sitting in this chair is not just a teacher who happens to be a Christian. No, this is a person who takes the kingdom of God into the classroom and understands that everything is based upon the knowledge of a living God. That's it. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, if we could just reflect on some of the things that I shared in your world and where you are and as you walk forward, if we could just bow in prayer. Heavenly Father, we say thanks for who you are. We say thanks, God, for the reality that we all can be ambassadors for you, Christ Jesus. We say thanks because we can walk in your authority and your power, operating in a posture of love with a sound mind, 
We can hold up the shield of faith and the full armament of God as we walk forward in faith that has embedded purpose and your character, the character of the living God. And so I ask that you would speak to each person now for the young ones that they would be able to see what you have for their future, that you would start to ignite something within them now. For those that are older that are here today, that you would resurrect things that were buried of old, that they would start to see new places that they can help. Even if it's serving in the community in a nonprofit organization, they can take the light of Christ with them in radical obedience and be used in new ways. God, I ask that you would penetrate deep into the heart of man as those that have uh, jobs now out in the marketplace, regardless of what they do, would they think and reflect upon the impact that they're actually making for your kingdom in the midst of what they do? And may they come before you and ask you to show and make a way so they can do something greater, God. We, we acknowledge that you can and that you desire to allow us and to help us to do even greater things than Christ has done because he said that that's what was possible. And as we look at his word, we take him at it and we say thanks to you, Father. So yeah, we ask God that you would help them to be able to stand up against the lies of the enemy, the distractions, and that they would start to say yes and amen and to the purposes you have for their lives. Father, we say have your way in the midst of this ministry, God. Regardless of who isn't here, we pray even as people listen to this message afterwards, God, after today, that it would be used, that your kingdom would multiply in people's lives, that you'd use our ministry to get into their lives in such practical ways that we can help them, that we can sow and invest into their lives so you can do a, a far greater thing, God. We ask that you'd expand our minds and that we'd have your mindset about who we are in you and that you would fulfill not just some of the things that you desire in us, but that we'd have no fear or anxiety that would be able to stand in the way of you accomplishing everything that you planned for our lives, God. Yes, Father, if there is anyone in this room today that needs greater faith, as they look at their career or their life. I pray, God, by faith now, interceding on their behalf, that they would open their hearts to you and that you begin to change them now, God, and that you would use us to be a watering can, to be able to pour on them so those seeds that you're depositing now in them would certainly be in fertile soil and that they would grow up and that the yield that we would see, because we know that the seeds that are sowed into your kingdom, God, they produce a yield all the time. And so we ask, God, that this yield would come back 30, 60, or 100 fold in their lives, that they couldn't even explain what you did besides, again, it was one of those God moments in their life. And we ask all these things in Christ's name. Amen. So? I would say I changed what I was thinking uh, to do, but if anybody wants to come forward and have us pray for you, we can do that.